You have been wanting to write a book. You have been even daring to call yourself a writer. You've been dreaming of being a successful author. You've gotten this great idea and you really can envision the whole thing. But then somewhere along the way, somewhere in this whole process, you get lost because writing a book is not that straightforward. There are so many moving parts. It's like juggling or spinning plates. If one of those balls or one of those plates comes crashing down, you've basically failed. And it's such a tough thing to start and to try and to do. It's such a concerted effort. It is such a consistent effort that you really feel like if you end up failing somewhere along the way on this journey, it's devastating. You feel like you've completely wasted some time, you feel very, very sad. And it's the sort of thing that can really freeze you in your tracks. And more than just failing at a project or failing at a job or failing at some little thing that you tried to do, this really is failing at probably a lifelong dream. And I do not want that to happen. Many of you, when you start this process, you ask yourselves, how long is this going to take? How long did this whole process take for a beginning writer going from idea to published? How long can I expect to be working on this thing? Because you think to yourself, you know, it's hard to stay motivated in the long term, but maybe I can stay motivated for a certain amount of time and actually achieve this goal. And that is fair enough. And I've told many writers that I think they can do it possibly in six months, not much less. And I don't think they should take too much more because one of the big secrets to writing success is being prolific. The more books you write, the more successful you are because writing another book is one of the best things you can do to market your first book. So how do I know all these things? I know all these things because I've been studying this very issue of writing a book and what to do to write a book for the better part of two years. I've been a writing coach for much more than that. And by the way, those of you who don't know me, I'm Karenna Akavane. I'm a PhD in literature. I've been a writing coach for at least 10 years. I've been an author, a podcaster, a teacher, and I've hosted a writing group for quite a few years, which ended up going on to Zoom during the pandemic. And that's what started me with an even larger audience that I was able to coach online. So I was able to start going from in-person coaching to virtual coaching using the power of Zoom and of this amazing invention called the telephone. So I've been studying this story and I have devised this online course that I am proud to say is finally coming out. And I have entitled the course From Idea to Published in Six Months because I believe that that's what we can do. So whether you take this course or not, I think that what I'm going to be talking about today in the How to Be an Author podcast is going to really, really help you as you go into the process of writing a book in six months. So join me on this episode of the How to Be an Author podcast, and we're going to be going into the nitty gritty of how to write a book in six months months when you only have an idea and maybe not even that. And yes, even if you are a beginner. If you're a writer dreaming of becoming a successful author, join me, writing coach Karenna Akavane, on the How to Be an Author podcast, your weekly source for writing information, inspiration, and motivation. Welcome to the How to Be an Author podcast. I'm Karenna Akavane. I'm your writing coach, and I am so happy you're here today to talk with me about how to go from idea to published in six months. My approach is different than a lot of other writing coaches and writing instructors' approaches. My approach is not like an MFA in writing where we're focusing on solely the craft of writing. Oh, don't get me wrong. I talk about the craft of writing a lot. I think that writing a great story is the most important thing, or at least one of the most important things when it comes to this process. But I really approach the whole process from a holistic point of view, because I think that if you do not combine mindset and productivity hacks and actionable platform building tips 
with your technical writing tips, you are not going to get that book done or you're not going to be able to promote that book once it's done. So I hate for you to drop one of these plates. And I liken these things, the mindset, the technical aspects, the productivity, and the platform. I liken all of these to very crucial plates that we have spinning in the air. And if a single one of those plates falls, you do not have a successful writing project. You don't have a successful writing career. And all the effort that you've gone into writing this book is kind of for nothing. And I don't want to see that happening to you. So what I always say is that I use a holistic approach that combines mindset, actionable technical tips to improve your writing and productivity hacks with platform building tips so that you can be both author and authorpreneur. If you're not taking my course, there are ways that you can try to get this information. This podcast is one of those really wonderful resources. You can also go check out my TikTok account at Writing Coach and look up all of these questions that you might have so that you can basically concoct your own course by cobbling all these pieces together. And it's absolutely possible for you to do this. I'm not going to tell you that you absolutely need to take my course because you don't. I'm telling you today a lot of the stuff that you can do, but is going to take a lot more research. It's going to take a lot more time. I hope you have really strong organizational skills. And I don't want you to go down a rabbit hole of research. That's why I try to compile all the research that you need and all of the facts that you need into this actionable stuff so that you can get this done faster. Now, if you have all the time in the world, by all means, All of this information is available online and in a bunch of different places. But if you want it all done for you, I think that my course from idea to publish in six months is a great way to go because I have lesson plans for each month. I've got video modules. I've got info sheets, worksheets, checklists, and then I've got a wrap-up meeting with me, your writing coach, so that you can ask any final questions that you might have. And then before you know it, in six months, you will be celebrating your finished book. But enough about my course. If you're interested in it, you can go to my website, creativeandwritingcoach.com. You'll have the links that you need to sign up for the course. But if you don't want to do that, I'm going to tell you how I would spend each month in the book writing process if I were to finish a book in six months and build my writing platform along the way. Because I think that that's crucial. Building your platform along the way, there is no substitute. So here's how I would organize each month. Month one, I would start laying the foundations. I would basically make sure that my head's in the right place. I would adopt the right mindsets. And then I would do some research to start to understand everything about storytelling. I would want to know what makes a good story. I would want to know what makes a good author voice, how to be an authentic author author and an authentic writer with an authentic voice, I would want to know like how to write a great story. I would want to know what the archetypes are of different stories. I would want to understand what genre is, what makes a great protagonist, antagonist, what other kinds of characters you might want to have in your book. And I would definitely want to figure out what kind of steps it's going to take for me to do this whole entire book writing process. And I would want to break that down into steps so that I have these micro goals that I can celebrate because mindset wise, breaking a huge goal down into other smaller steps is definitely the right way to go. So if you don't have my checklist and my worksheets, you can absolutely do this yourself because each author's road is a different road. So you can figure out, okay, what am I going to need to do and how long is it going to take me? And that's really, really crucial. But I think you need to be confident about what it is it's going to take. So I would kind of figure out first, is my idea a good one? I would settle on a good idea. And 
in my course, you have all of these checklists to show you what a good idea is. But if you're not taking my course, there are so many ways for you to test your idea. And one of those ways is asking friends. One of those ways is, you know, really meditating on it or brainstorming. You're going to figure it out. I'm not too worried, but definitely settle on one idea because if you don't settle on an idea, you're not going to be moving forward. After that, you're going to expand this idea into a plot that works. You're going to use the key storytelling principle that are out there to concoct a really strong story that has a compelling plot with super strong causality. Causality is the key. And if you don't know what causality is, you either take my course or you Google that stuff. Because here's my big secret in life as well. Googling any question you have is a great way to find out an answer. And I recommend that you look in several different places because all answers are not created equal, but you can definitely figure out what you're doing simply by Googling. While you're writing this plot, you're going to really want to look about what an inciting incident is, how to build a strong one, what character arcs are. You're going to want to know what happens at the beginning and the end of your book. And then you're going to want to make sure that your characters are super strong and that your setting is really, really strong as well, because a setting that impacts your plot is the best kind of setting. Think about Harry Potter without Hogwarts. There is no Harry Potter, so your setting needs to be awesome. You definitely need to hook the reader at the beginning of your book and keep them hooked throughout. So there are different ways you can do this. And the course goes through all of these different ways, but you can also research how to keep your reader hooked. When it comes to a character arc, remember that the whole thing is about transformation. How do you bring about transformation? You do it with conflict and tension. Conflict and tension happen when there's a tension between your, what your character wants and those antagonistic forces trying to keep them from getting that. It forces them to come at things different ways, learn things about themselves, start to look at things differently, and to grow and change. So all of that is really, really important. One of the big tools that I like to use is something I call the story spine. And this is something that is part of my whole master mindset on writing a great story. The story spine is one of my favorite tools. It helps you to establish a strong plot and strong causality. Once you've figured out how your story is, figuring out what your genre is is going to be pretty important at this stage. Knowing your genre is crucial. I've got some other podcast episodes about genres, so you can definitely do your research that way. But writing to genre is a smart way to go. It doesn't mean that you have to write a totally formulaic book, but you definitely want to have some idea as to what is expected from certain genres because that's what your reader's expecting as well once you identify your book as being part of a certain genre. So you're going to have certain tropes, certain ideas, not necessarily cliches. There'll be some cliches you want to avoid in each genre, but also your genre even impacts who you actually reach out to to query an agent and also what your cover is going to look like. That's really, really important. So next thing you need to think about is the characters. Who are your crucial characters? What are the character arcs that they're going to have? You need to build a really strong protagonist and antagonist. And you also want to avoid the huge mistake of having way too many characters. When you have your characters decided, you're going to want to know what their backstories are. You're going to want to know what their strengths and weaknesses are. And you're just going to want to do a lot of thinking about what makes a well-rounded character because your reader falls in love with relatable characters. Relatable characters have strengths and weaknesses. They have motivation. And it's the emotional content that happens when your characters are faced with conflict and tension that really raises the stakes in your story. And that's really, really important. That is a, a key piece of information I'm giving you right there. Next is your world building. I mentioned the setting, how important it is. And you want to think about to yourself what makes a good setting in general? How is the setting in my book so important? How will it impact the plot? And where do I need to include more detail or less detail? You're going to want to do some world building research without completely falling into that rabbit hole. And that's a very good balance to strike. Then this inciting incident I talked about, definitely think about the inciting incident because this is really where your story happens. So you're going to want to do some research on that and figure it out. Next, I use something that I call the story architect. If you've heard of Save the Cat, 
that is similar to what I do here. I've adapted the hero's journey to create a really satisfying story that's going to hook your reader. So you'll want to make sure that you have the key elements, but you do have creative license. So don't think that using the story architect or story archetypes is going to make your story super cliche and boring. It's not. It's just going to help your story to have all of those key moments that move it along so that the reader keeps on reading. Because again, the goal is to keep your reader reading and not have any spots where they're going to disconnect from your story. So if you don't want to find out what my story architect is, you can check out the podcast episode on Save the Cat. That's going to be really, really helpful for you. The last thing that you need to be doing in your first month is you're going to be establishing the foundation of your author platform. The foundations of your author platform include your author website, a mailing list, social media accounts, and a few other little elements. Of course, in my course, I have some hacks you can use. I have some worksheets and I have a bunch of information sheets with the step-by-step on how to create all of these things. But the most important thing you need to know is the biggest lie authors want to believe is I'm going to write it and readers will find it. And that does not happen without an author platform. Fundamentally, your author platform is just the way that you communicate with your ideal audience. So as long as you avoid making key mistakes and wasting your time and even worse, not doing it, you're going to be just fine. Make sure that when you're establishing your mailing list, you nurture that list throughout these six months It's really, really important. And then when it comes to social media, I really want to stress that you want to have a major strategy and you don't want to be wasting time on social media. It's only too easy to do that. And I really want to spare you from doing that, especially if you want to be getting this whole writing thing and promoting thing done in six months. Your next month, month number two, this is when we start to write our rough draft in a month. And I have a proprietary technique that I use to create this rough draft. I also have a podcast episode on this, and it doesn't need to be perfect, but you can't edit a blank page. So I want you to be thinking about how to be super productive to write this rough draft in a month. You're also going to be keeping on the platform, but In this month, you need to be thinking about how you're going to be making time for writing, space for writing. You're going to be figuring out what works best for you, whether that is writing sprints or the dictation method. I believe that I have a bunch of videos on TikTok about using dictation. I believe I also have a podcast out on that, and that's something that I would probably need to go back and check. But In the course, I go through it step by step, and I believe I have actually a blog post on that on my website, creativeandwritingcoach.com. So all of that could really help. But it's important when you're doing this to use these writing hacks. It's not cheating to make it easier for you. You need to know your productivity style, and you need to stay consistent and to a schedule that works for you. That's really, really important. When you're writing a rough draft, you're basically going to be taking that story spine, you're going to be building it out into an outline. If I can stress one thing, it's that an outline is your friend. It enables you to write scene by scene, which I think is the most efficient way to write. Um, I think it's important for you to know what a scene entails, how to set a scene, and also you need to be aware of what needs to be in your rough draft and what doesn't. So all of these things are things that you should research in month two, and you basically are going to use the story architect or save the cat to brainstorm all of your scenes using the five W's, who, what, why, where, when, and you're going to be getting these scenes done. I don't want you to be self-editing too much, but I do want you to realize whether your scene is doing its job. There are different types of scene, and so you need to be aware of how scenes work, how they have conflict and tension, how each scene needs a takeaway, how each scene moves the plot forward. All of that is really, really important. And the last magical ingredient is pacing. When you're doing your rough draft, pacing isn't as crucial, but it's something to be aware of as you go. In terms of your platform, in month two, I think you should be practicing things like introducing yourself, talking about your process, thinking about what's cool about your book, thinking about what you could be an expert in, as in your zone of excellence, and you want to be starting to build a lead magnet to collect email addresses. 
yeah, no big deal. <laughs> but this is important. This is something that you need to be doing because having an email list is absolutely priceless. You can look up how to do this with lead magnets online or again, the how to be an author podcast has a few things about lead magnets and also from idea to published in six months has it all step by step. So find the awesome in your book, be an expert and communicate that in your lead magnets. Month three is about getting your work ready to be seen. Some writers tend to lose steam at this stage, but not you. You're going to be talking self-editing, working with beta readers. You're going to be thinking about whether you're going to be self-publishing or conventional publishing. And of course, in month three, you're not going to be dropping that platform. That would be silly. When it comes to self-editing, look up how to be editing at a story level, a scene level, sentence level, character level, dialogue level, causality, inciting incident, beginning and end. Checking a new outline that you've made from your rough draft might be your secret weapon when it comes to finding any holes in the plot in causality or in logic, finding problems with your character development or with your pacing. After that, you check each scene for conflict and tension, making sure that each scene has goals and a function. You're going to check out your sentences, if your pacing is good, if we can understand you, if there's clarity. And then there's the dialogue. Dialogue so important. So you definitely want to research how to write awesome dialogue. That's going to make or break your book. When it comes to beta readers, these are a non-negotiable part of the writing process. We cannot be objective about our book, so it's really crucial for you to find beta readers to read your book. You're going to want to have a multitude of different types of beta reader. You can research what this means. I've got a podcast episode of that. I've got a blog post on that. And also, of course, that is part of the course, including questions that you can ask your beta readers and a whole section on dealing with feedback. So that's really, really important. You need to understand that your beta readers are just readers. They're checking for readability, whether your book is compelling, readable, understandable. They are not editors. Very important. So don't expect that. But I suspect that dealing with the feedback from your beta readers is going to maybe freeze you in your tracks. And I don't want you to do that because it's too easy to get freaked out. Please don't. Your beta readers are there to help you. And I really want you to minimum book a 15 minute call with me and talk to me about your beta reader feedback because I don't want this to stress you out. I think that at this point, it's about the right time to be thinking about whether you're going to be self-publishing or conventional publishing. I know that that's really weird. Some people think about this straight up front. I like to think of it halfway through because at this point, you know what kind of book you're dealing with. You know whether you have a book that is commercially sellable or a book that is maybe more on the self-publishing end of things. And you also know what kind of a writing career you want, what kind of expectations you have, and what kind of a timeline you're on. So definitely do some research on that. I, of course, have blog posts and podcast episodes on this. And of course, it's part of the course. You're going to find out what's right for you. And I want you to let go of the preconceptions. Self-publishing has really, really changed a lot. And conventional publishing has changed a lot too. So let's figure out how that works for you. But I think that that's really crucial. Now we're going to keep on the platform on month three. You want to do maybe a website audit at this point. And I think that you definitely want to see if your website's working. You want to see if your lead magnets are working. And this is the part where you're going to start to use analytics. This is where you're looking at the numbers, looking at what's going on on your website, or looking at whether you're converting these leads into people on your mailing list and seeing who's opening your emails. All of those things are super important. And also, I think it's time for you to start to realize how SEO works. SEO is search engine optimization, and you cannot have a successful author platform without even understanding the fundamentals of that. And this is the sort of thing that you can Google all day long. There is so much about this. In fact, I'll recommend another podcast that explains it really well. Jenna Kutcher on her Gold Digger podcast does an excellent job of describing SEO uh, for free. And then in, of course, my course, I've got a lot about easy ways that you can improve the SEO on your platform. 
I also think that you should be brainstorming content ideas, creating a content calendar for yourself, because that way you can be batching content. Content is king when it comes to SEO and also when it comes to people finding you, to establishing expertise and authority, you want to be creating high quality, long form content. So I like for you to research how that works or just check it out in the course. Month four, we're almost there. Editing, rewriting, polishing, I think is really important to either hire an editor or do self-editing. I don't think you can self-edit that well, but I think it's important for you to be honest with yourself about how much you can spare to hire an editor. Some editors will do something very simple and streamlined, like an editorial assessment if you can't afford a full-on editor. But sometimes I feel you can't not afford an editor, so that's something to think about. Month four, you're also thinking about your cover, your title, and guess what? Still your author platform. So research how you hire an editor, research the types of editor, know that I, writing coach, am an editor as well. You can try to hire me, but know that it's a relationship and that you are going to be talking with your editor to see if they're the right fit and if you're the right fit for them. As for whether the investment pays off, that is not something that I can answer. If you don't do anything and build your platform and promote your book, no, the investment won't automatically pay off. But if you do, and if you do everything right, it can pay off in massive ways. Um, in my course, I tell you what types of editors there are, and I think you can look this up. I also have some blog posts on this. And then when it comes to the cover, you can research how to design a cover yourself, how to hire somebody, what a book cover is, what it needs, what the formatting is. And I have all of this, of course, in the course, um, but you can look this up. There's so many different resources for that, that you can definitely figure that one out. First impressions matter. You can tell a book by its cover. So I think that's really important, but I don't want you to be dreaming about the cover too early if you don't need it. Next, I talk about title in month four. I think it's important to come up with your title not too early again. I have made huge mistakes when it came to giving a title to my books. So at this point, I think I've really had to figure out what makes a good title and what doesn't. I do have a podcast episode on this, so you can definitely listen to that. And also I have a bunch of worksheets in my course as to how to pick the perfect title because the title is your book's first hook. It is the thing that impacts the word of mouth marketing for your book, which is one of the biggest ways that books get marketed. So that's really important. So you mean, they mean to make sure all of these things about your title to make it memorable, to make it searchable and make it be fitting into your genre. I think that's really, really important. Uh, of course, your platform in month four, you're going to be thinking about lining up appearances, fostering that mailing list of yours, building relationships with other writers, with readers, with reviewers. And you're going to be thinking about creating a book trailer, which I think is a really good thing to do. I have a great article on that in the blog on creativeandwritingcoach.com. Month five, the final polish. This is when you get back your feedback from your editor. You're going to be removing any barriers to enjoying your story. You're going to be doing a final read through, doing all the fixing that your editor found. You're going to be formatting your book perfectly. You're going to be crafting a synopsis and a blurb, ramping up your author platform. This is really a crucial month because this is where your book really takes shape. I think it's so important. And keep in mind that your synopsis and your blurb are two very important tools when it comes to marketing your book, to querying agents, and even to just having an elevator pitch for your book, to, you know, pitching your book to reviewers, all of that sort of thing, a synopsis and a blurb are so important. You can research how to write a perfect synopsis perfect blurb. You can read my blog post, you can listen to my podcast, and you can look in the course because we've got lots of worksheets and forms that tell you how to do that. I'm starting to realize just how much I crammed into this course, and I'm kind of proud of myself, I have to say. Um, next are our platform duties that we have this month. I really stress that you should Google yourself this month. See how far you've come. I want you to have at least two whole pages of results on yourself as a writer when you Google your name. 
I'm going to be going back over the SEO basics if I were you. Um, Think about how to be where your readers are. And then you can also be thinking about advanced reader copies and pre-orders. These are things that are important and also reaching out to local libraries and bookstores if you are self publishing. Really think about how and why and what to communicate this month, I think is really key. Month six, publishing is just the beginning. This is an intense month, and don't forget it's just the beginning. It's important to maintain momentum and not let all the work you did go to waste. Being an author is a long-term project. So I want to have you thinking about the self-publishing process, if that's what you're doing, or the querying process, if that's what you're doing. But really, your book promotion is going to be the biggest task that you have this month. You need to be thinking about the different outlets, the ISBNs, um, and all of those other things. As Pricing is another thing you want to think about. I think that that's very, very important. Um, When it comes to conventional publishing, you need to research the poop out of this because there's so many ways that you can go wrong. There are a lot of moving pieces. You need to find the right agent. You need to do your query package. And there's a lot to do. So definitely a lot of research there, not impossible to figure out. And then there is the book promotion. And it's all about showing up in unique ways and getting people to talk about your book and reaching those readers and mastering different types of media, continuing to create content, reusing content, batching content, all these different content hacks that you can have, and also starting to foster that mailing list even more. This is a long-term relationship with your readers. And, you know, remembering that you're going to be writing the next book and the next and creating momentum, that mailing list is a precious asset for you. A last thing that you can be thinking about is an audiobook. Do you want to produce an audiobook? You can research how that works. If you are um, on my website or on the podcast, I've got some stuff about audiobooks, but of course, you guessed it, it's also in the course. So that's it. I think that in 30 minutes, we've gone through the whole process of writing a book in six months. Can you see now how this is a thing that is possible to do? Can you also see how much work it's going to be? It is. I'm not going to lie to you. It is a huge undertaking, but I'm so confident that you can do it. I'm not even worried. If you have any questions, if you want to talk to a writing coach for free for 15 minutes to see how you can do this, what works best, what I think you need in terms of tools or in terms of different experiences. Do I think you should just have a writing coach or do I think you should take the course? You can have a free 15-minute call with me. I am always available to speak to you. Go on my website and book that call with me now. No obligations, nothing weird. I'll just talk to you and make you feel better about the whole process of writing a book. And if you are a writing coach on demand person, you don't get a bonus podcast episode this week. I know that's terrible. What you get instead is you get free access to a mini course that is going to really help you on top of the courses that you've already gotten. So that's going to be really fun. And you're going to have all the extra opportunities to chat with me in office hours about how best to utilize the course and how best to utilize the next six months. Good luck to those of you starting the process. And I will chat with you soon. If you have any pressing writing-related questions or would like to be featured on the How to Be an Author podcast, please feel free to reach out on my website, creativeandwritingcoach.com.